that's my story. Uh, U.S. Airways, 15 billion. I, I have one final message for you today. But first off, if you have any questions for me, I'd be willing to entertain them. While you're thinking of yours, I'll start out with mine. I find a lot of people ask me, why can't we do something about geese and engines? And, uh, you know, a lot of people have some real ideas about that. I used to get a lot of mail. Every day I go down to the post office, the mailbox, and there'd be stacks of letters placed in all around the world. Sully once said, he said, uh, I, I said in a, in a speech that I had received a letter from every continent on Earth except Antarctica. And he said, you know what happens when you say something? I got a card from Antarctica. <laughs> But uh, I, I get these, uh, these uh, letters from people, some of them have these really ideas about how we could solve this problem. One of them actually had an engineer drawing of the airplane with what looked like giant fly swatters out in front of it. <laughs> they were going to deflect the geese or catch the geese. But people don't understand, these are giant fans. You can't put something in front of them. It's just not, it's just not possible. Um, but, you know, it's, it's one thing to think, well, you know, you've got a screen door in your house that keeps the bugs out. But if you fired a boost through that screen door at 230 miles an hour, I don't think it'll last very long. <laughs> so there really isn't much that we can do about this, but we were extremely unlucky to take two keys through the core of both engines. And I think it's something that's never going to be recreated again. So does anybody else have a question? No. Sir? Is that playing in the air now? No. No. <laughs> No, it, it actually, uh, it sat for a long time in a uh, uh, salvage yard in New Jersey. And then um, it actually made the news. Uh, it was all over the news for about a week. They trucked it, a full-size airliner on the highways down to Charlotte, North Carolina, where it now sits in a museum. Uh, at the same airport that, that Sully and I were based in. Any other? Ma'am. I got a question. I would like to know if in an airplane, why don't they ever tell you if you land in the water, how to get the seat out to save your butt if you landed in the water? Well, the question is why they don't ever brief you like, about the seat cushions, the white vests, and they, they <coughs> on the uh, boarding part, you know, the uh, I think one reason is the fact that uh, most most flights you don't have to carry. We would not have had to have anything in that airplane uh, because we weren't going 50 miles over, on, over water. On, on, in, on U.S. Airways, on our system, they send all of the airplane types to the Caribbean. So everything on U.S. Airways is equipped to do that. But if you went on United or American or Chicago, very possibly the airplane would have no uh, water life-saving devices on it. But it's just not part of the uh, wired briefing items that the, the FAA requires. Uh, they, they actually, I remember 20 years ago, they used to put those life vests in the seat pockets where people would, would swipe them for their folks. So that's why now they hang below the seat in a little pouch. But once again, you know, now I've now I've uh, uh, I've uh, you know explained that little secret to you, so you'll know. But most people who get on airplanes don't know. They tell us to take the seat out, but they never told us how to take the seat out. That was our life vest. Oh, the so seat we had no idea yeah. that there was something you put on. We thought we had to grab that seat. Well, that you, the, you do you do take the seat cushion if you don't have a flight vest. Well, we didn't know you how to get it out. It's just Velcro going. All that seed is is just a metal frame. Everything rips off. It's, it's Velcro. It's like a Chippendale dance group. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Not a one? You know, the crew in the past years of 1549 were ordinary people. Absolutely ordinary people in extraordinary circumstances. You know, like, like many people then and now, we were faced with great adversity. And together, we overcame it. And I think we learned lessons that I think that everybody should know deep down from themselves. In moments of crisis, you have what you need to control your own destiny. In times of uncertainty, you can draw strength from one another. And in times of, of great adversity, you can make impactful decisions that will alter your future. Pilots asked me if I got any message from them, having experienced this. And uh, it was kind of surprising. I kind of never thought that pilots would think that this was such a big deal, but they think it's even more of a big deal than general conference. Flying airplanes.
Plains is, has been defined as hours and hours of sheer boredom uh, sparked by moments of terror. But uh, when, when pilots ask me what lesson I would have for them, you know, I tell them that, you know what, we're only on this planet with a breath of time. Moments quickly become hours, hours become days, days become years. But any one moment can completely define you and your existence on this planet. So I tell them that when you have to the cockpit, Make sure every single moment you are giving the very best that you can. Thank you for joining me this evening.